In this lesson, we will take a look at the geometry of the solutions of the homogeneous equation ax equals zero and the non-homogeneous equation ax equals b. We'll be looking at the situation in R2 with one free variable. Let's begin by solving the homogeneous equation a times vector x equals the zero vector. We begin with the matrix equation where vector x is the matrix x1, x2. From here, we write the augmented matrix where the first row is three, nine, zero, and the second row is negative two, negative six, zero. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here on the right. Notice how we have a pivot in row one, column one, and therefore x sub one is a basic variable. Since there's no pivot in column two, we know x sub two is a free variable. The first row indicates x sub one plus three x sub two equals zero, and because x sub two is a free variable, we have x sub two equals x sub two. Next, we solve the first equation for x sub one. x sub one equals negative three x sub two. Let's go ahead and parameterize the solution by letting x sub two equal s, and therefore x sub one is equal to negative three s, where s is any real number. The solutions to the homogeneous equation, a times vector x equals a zero vector, are all the vectors x, where x sub one equals negative three s, and x sub two equals s. Factoring out the s, we have vector x equals s times the vector negative three, one, which means the solutions are all scalar multiples of the vector negative three, one. Let's take a look at this graphically. Here we see the graph of the vector negative three, one. This is just one of the solutions when s equals one. Again, any scalar multiple is also a solution to the equation. It's also helpful to think of the solutions as points where the point would be the terminal point of the vector. So here we see scalar multiples of the vector, all of which are solutions. Again, thinking of the solutions as points on the terminal point of the vector, notice all the points or all the solutions fall on the same line. Which means the solution is this line here that contains all of the scalar multiples of the vector, negative three, one, or all the points that can be represented as scalar multiples of the vector, negative three, one and notice how the line passes through the origin. The reason the line passes through the origin is because notice how when s is equal to zero, vector x would be the zero vector. And now let's solve the corresponding non-homogeneous equation, where vector b is the vector 12, negative eight. For the augmented matrix, now the first row is three, nine, 12, and the second row is negative two, negative six, negative eight. I've already written the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Again, where x sub one is a basic variable and x sub two is a free variable. Now the first row indicates that x sub one plus three x sub two equals four, and we have x sub two equals x sub two. Again, solving the first equation for x sub one, we have x sub one equals four minus three x sub two. To parameterize the solution, let's let x sub two equal t, and therefore x sub one equals four minus three t. Which means the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation a times vector x equals vector b are all the vectors x, where x sub one is equal to four minus three t, and x sub two is equal to t. We can write t as zero plus t, and therefore we can write this as a sum, where we have the constant vector four zero plus t times the vector negative three one. And now if we compare these solutions to the non-homogeneous equation to the homogeneous equation, notice how both contain scalar multiples of the vector negative three one. However, the non-homogeneous equation has this constant vector four zero, which means the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation are all the vectors x formed by starting with the constant vector four zero and adding scalar multiples of the vector negative three one. Let's take a look at this graphically. First, we want to plot the vector four zero, which is a little hard to see because it's along the positive x-axis here. I'll see if I can highlight this. And then from the terminal point of this vector, we will add scalar multiples of the vector negative three, one. So here we see the graph of the vector negative three, one, where the initial point is at the terminal point of the vector four, zero. So the terminal point of this vector here represents one solution to the non-homogeneous equation. But again, we can add scalar multiples of the vector negative three, one, and still have solutions to the non-homogeneous equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at adding scalar multiples of the vector negative three, one to the constant vector four, zero. Notice all the terminal points of the second vector fall on the same line, and notice how the line would be parallel to the solutions to the homogeneous equation. 
So this blue line represents all of the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation. So what's happened here is that to find the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation, we could start with the solutions to the homogeneous equation, and then the constant vector for zero shifts the line right for units, making the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation parallel to the solutions to the homogeneous equation. Let's go ahead and summarize our findings. When solving these equations in R2 with one free variable, the homogeneous equation will always be a line passing through the origin, and the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation will be a line not passing through the origin. The reason the solutions to the non-homogeneous equation will never pass through the origin is because notice how when t is equal to zero, the vector x is still the constant vector for zero, and if both solutions contain scalar multiples of the same vector, which in this case are scalar multiples of the vector negative three, one, the two lines to the corresponding systems will always be parallel. I hope you found this helpful.